My name is Anna Trong, and I am here with Henrico Recreation and Parks Department. I'm so glad you're here with me today. We are going to be talking about sending some love out to people that we know. Through the quarantine, many people are anxious to get back to their normal, but one thing that I've heard people say they miss more than anything is just hugging and touching and being close to the ones they love. So what we're going to do today is we're going to send a little bit of love out to those people that we can't be close to right now. We're going to send a hug. And what you use to send a hug are your hands and your arms. So we're going to create some new hands and arms that we can send to our family and friends and just express our gratitude and love for them. The things that you're going to need are supplies. And we'll go over those so you can be ready for when you want to make a hug. First of all, you need some paper. Paper and a pencil to help you draw your hands. Ribbon or string. Markers or paint or crayons or colors of some sort, however you want to decorate your hands with a brush to make sure you can do that. Scissors so you can cut your hands out and tape glue or a stapler so you can connect the ribbon to your hands. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to draw a hand. We're just going to trace our hand in any shape or fashion that you'd like. So I'm going to use my pencil and draw around my hand. You can spread your fingers wide. You can keep them close together. Whatever you think is going to look good. So now that I've got my hand drawn, I'm going to choose something to color it with. And like I said, I've got a few different options, but you know, I just really like markers. They're fun, they're bright, they're colorful. You can choose all different sorts. You can make different designs. I like markers. So, and that we're sending love. We don't want to forget that part, but I like design. And you know what, green is one of my favorite colors, so I always like to add green somehow, some way. And I'm just gonna make this up. I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing today, but I'm also thinking about nature. So maybe I'm gonna add some swirls down the finger on one side, and maybe some circles over here, some polka dots here, and just spreading it all out. I think I'm going to go all the way down the hand there. I'm going to spread it out. And a nice color that goes with green, I think orange. Those, it's another one of my favorite colors. I'm going to complement my green by just making some loops to go around the circles. You can really think this out if you want. You can practice or you can just go with it. How about some little X stars to go right here? Well, I've got a couple of other fingers I need to work on. What colors could I do there? How about, you know, here's some complementary colors, red and purple. We like those. And for this one, I might make some zigzags. Should I keep going? We'll see. That one looks like a bird. Go a little further. And I'm going to do purple. Maybe some... It looks like turkey feet right now. To see what else we can add just to make it as colorful and vibrant as you want it to be. And you know what, I missed some blue. I wanna add some blue in here. So I'm gonna work on this finger and make some blue. And I think I'm gonna do some big X's and O's. I'm gonna keep going down the hand here with this one, I like it. And I think yellow goes good with that too. Now, from what you're seeing, you probably can't see the hand very well. So what I like to do is, I gotta put one more color in there, maybe some 
light blue to go with it. Some kind of make it look like a firework of some sort. And I think I'm going to put some more red right in there because I think the red goes good with it. So we've got our decoration going on, but it's really hard to see the hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline it. And I like black because it just really makes it pop. You can see the hand better. I'm just going to go along and trace my hand so you can see what the hand really looks like. From here, now we've got our hand. Looks good. We're going to cut it out. So take your scissors, and everybody kind of has a technique when they're cutting to find the best way, especially when you have a lot of kind of V's indentations. I go around the tip so that it's going to be easier to cut down between the fingers. And I'm trying to cut on the outside of the black line, just so you can still see that. If you cut through it, that's OK. And then I can go back in and go down into the fingers. It just makes it a little easier. If I go from both sides, you can cut down in between and not cut your hand off. or lose any fingers there. So you can be thinking about who you want to send this to. And maybe you can make more than one. Because you know a lot of people like hugs. So a little bit more there. We'll get it, and there we go. We've got our hand. Now, you don't want to forget to send the love, so I've already done one here. We've got our hands together. And so in order to complete your hug, you want to connect it because you're not hugging with just hands. you got to have some arms, too. So what we can use for that is ribbon. And I've got all different kinds of ribbon here. And it really doesn't matter if you use ribbon or string or something to connect the two. And like I said, green is my favorite color. I've got one here with orange, so I think I'm going to go with green next. And the way to measure, there's a couple of different ways you can measure. One is to know your hug is the span of your arms. So you can measure from hand to hand if you want, or you can cut just a small section uh, to connect the two. My first set I made is the full length of my arms. So that's a big, long one. But this one, I think I'm just going to cut a little bit so that they'll know that we're connected. Cut my scissors. There we go. Now you're going to take your hands and you're going to flip them over. And this is where you can use tape. Tape works best, I think. Uh, you can staple it, you can glue it, whatever's going to work for you. But just a little bit of tape on the back. And the other end, we're going to tape there. And now you've got your hug. So we've got our love. We're going to send this with all the love that we can. But you need something to put it in. You, you could maybe send this through the mail like this. It might get a little broken and destroyed. But we want to make sure it's safe. We want to keep our love safe. So we're going to make a nice, pretty envelope to send these in. And there's lots of different ways that you can send a really nice envelope. And here are some supplies to make an envelope, make a decorative envelope. First, you need an envelope. Any kind of envelope will do. Again, more pencils, markers, colored pencils, crayons, paint, um, magazines, 
scissors, glue, and maybe some stamps or in an ink pad to go with it. So to create our decorative envelopes, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. You can make an envelope, and that's where I talk about magazines and decorative paper. You can take a magazine and turn it into an envelope. I'm going to pretend these are my letters. And I have some magazines here that I've cut out with things that I like. I like shoes. I like to eat. So I like guacamole. It's one of my favorites. This was just a neat picture of kind of a landscape scene. Like I said, nature. I like nature as well. So we've got a few different pieces of magazine pages here. You're going to tear the magazine page out. You've got to think about, with an envelope, it's got to be big enough to fit your letter in. So if your letter's too big, this one's not going to work. You can fold your letter in half, or you can find a bigger piece of paper. So I've got some just some decorative papers here that you could use too. It's a little bigger, so that might be nice. But I'm going to show you how to make one out of, an envelope, out of a magazine. Now to start, like I said, you want to make sure it fits the size of your letter. And when mailing letters, there's some things to think about. You need to address your envelope. So the person you're sending your letter to, the name and the address have to fit somewhere on the envelope. If you have a magazine that you really like a picture of and your favorite part is right in the middle, your address is going to go over that. It's going to cover it completely. So maybe you want to rearrange it so that it, that picture shows up better, or maybe it's even on the back of the envelope. So that's something to take into consideration. Now this one, I said I like food. So I've got guacamole on one side, but you know what? I've got something else on the back that I like a lot too. I like cookies. Mm, I love cookies. They're some, one of my weaknesses. Now this magazine would work just fine if we made it one shape. But if I want to make a traditional envelope that uses the corners to flip in, I'm going to turn it on its side. And what we want to do is we want to make a square. We need a square out of our magazine. So there's different ways that you can do that. An easy way to make a square piece of paper is take your corner and bring it up to the edge and make that straight along the line there. And then you can take a marker. You've, I've got my corners meeting down here, and I'm going to take my marker, and I'm going to edge it. Just make a line so that I know where to cut. I made two lines here. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut that square. And this is going to be the beginning of my envelope. So I've got my letter, and I've got an idea of where to, what I want to be the front, but I'm not going to work from this side. I'm going to flip it over and do it work from the back. So my letter, I see it's got edges. It's, it's going to fit nicely. It's going to be covered completely. I'm just going to fold all my edges in around the letter. to make sure that they're all in line. And when I fold them all up, you'll see that it becomes an envelope. Now one thing to make it a little easier, I've got my envelope here, and the front is a nice cookie. I'm going to just make it a little easier to fold. I'm going to cut the little corners out. So right where they kind of fold together, I'm going to cut those little corners. This will just make it easier to fold it all together and, and glue it together. I've got one more here. So now I've got my letter and my envelope, and now I need to glue it. So I also got to think about what it's going to look like on the front. And something that I want to take into consideration is the letters, the words on my envelope. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. 
but we're going to start gluing our envelope together. We're going to have the side flaps go in, and this is going to be the bottom. So if I fold it up, it'll get a better idea of where I need to glue it. I'm going to glue right along these edges here. And glue stick works just fine. Gives you a nice sticky surface. And some envelopes, you can see how this one has a little corner to it. Many envelopes are just flat right there. So you can just cut that little tip off and you've got a nice envelope. And we'll make sure my letter fits in there nicely. I'm gonna flip it upside down. So when they, the idea when you're sending letters, you want them to be able to pull it out and see from top to bottom. Or if it's a folded card, you put the folded side in, so if there's anything inside the card, when they pull it out, it doesn't get lost in the envelope. So we've got our envelope here, and I can glue it shut and send my love on its way. That is a pretty cool envelope. One thing you want to think about if you're picking a magazine is to get a heavier paper. It's going to go through the mail better. It won't get ripped or shredded while it's going through the mail. And what I mentioned earlier about words on your paper, when we're addressing our envelopes, we want to have that address right kind of in the middle or the bottom right corner, bottom right quarter of the envelope itself. And to just give you a little bit of information about when things are going through the mail, flat letters like this are being um, scanned mechanically. So there's a machine reading your letter, reading your address. And if you have a lot of words, it might confuse the machine and it won't know where to send it. It might just think, who's this person I'm trying to send this to? So you want to make sure you don't have a lot of letters or numbers on the front of your envelope or that it's not in the bottom right corner of your envelope because the machine reads from the bottom right and it reads backwards, backwards and from bottom to top. So this one I think will be okay. And even my return address, in case this letter does get lost and the, the post, the delivery person wants to send it back to my house in case uh, I don't want my love to be lost in the mail, we need to put a return address. And I can put a little address label right here and it'll cover up those letters. So I think this is a pretty good letter to be sent. I don't know that my hug would fit in this envelope so what we might need to do is to find a bigger envelope. And we can do more than just create our own envelope. We can design and decorate a plain envelope to make it even more fancy. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. So we'll look at some supplies in order to decorate an envelope. All right. Now, in order to decorate an envelope, you want just a plain envelope of any sort. It could be a white envelope. It could be a brown envelope. Um, whatever size envelope and whatever color, it doesn't matter. I'll give you a hint, though. When you're sending envelopes through the mail and through that machine, it's hard for the machine to read any red envelope or green envelope. So if you send out holiday cards, just remember to make sure that address is really dark so they can read it. So you need an envelope. You need a pencil, some markers as well. And this, again, is up to your imagination. We're going to decorate our envelope today. And I've got my markers here. And you know what? You can make it as colorful as you want or plain as you want. I'm going to kind of work with a Zentangle look. I'm just going to go black and white. And like I said, I want to make sure that in the bottom right corner is where my address is going to go. i got to leave space for that. My return address is going to be up in the upper left corner. I need space for that. And what's the one thing you don't want to forget? Don't want to forget your stamp. The stamp is going to get there. So you need to make sure if you have any design, you don't want to put it in those places that might be covered up. So I have an envelope. And I said the stamp needs to go here. So you know what? I'm just going to make a little square so it reminds me where the stamp is. And I kind of like a border around my envelope. Just kind of gives it a frame. It makes it look almost like a picture. And like I said, I might go some zentangle designs today. So let's see. I'm going to make a, I like, like nature. So let's go with maybe a flower. 
design. And you can just go with whatever feels right. Maybe some polka dots along the way. And I might repeat that a little bit. <laughs> and let's see what else we've got. Let's do maybe a sunshine, or it looks like a sunshine, or maybe some waves. And I like just kind of circles. Now this part might be covered with the address label. So I'll make it so that it just kind of repeats itself. And so it's not gonna, you're not gonna miss anything if I cover it up. Looks like bubbles coming out of the page. Something there and how about um, I'm going to leave that corner open because that's where my address is going to go. So this is one way to decorate an envelope. I've got room for my stamp. Like I said, you're not going to cover up anything too decorative there. And I've got room for my address here. So this will be a great envelope to send to your friends or family or anyone. And you can color it in too. So if you want to start with a black marker or something like that or a pencil just in case, uh, if you're a perfectionist and you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, go ahead and start with pencil and see how that works for you. So this is one style of envelope. I'm going to show you some more examples of decorative envelopes that we've created. And these are just, some are simple, some are a little more fancy. You can see the address there. We are sending these to our main office at Henrico Recreation and Parks. So if you all want to send us some love, there's the address there. We've got it. different examples of decorations, colorful. Uh, you've got your line so you can see the address easily, but still a little fancy in between. If you want to get more involved with this, here are some websites that you can look at for inspiration. They're just some really good ideas about making more mail art. And right here I say it's listed as snail mail. Now, the term snail mail did not come into existence until about 1982. And this is when electronic mail began to be developed. So they needed something to just delineate between the two so you knew how to expect things because electronic mail, like email and such, can be almost instant. Snail mail, Someone's got to pick up the letter, they've got to process it, they've got to deliver it. So it takes a little time. So some people think that's way too slow, almost slow like a snail. So that's why we call it snail mail. But here are some websites that you can look at on how to decorate snail mail, make it a little fancier, and even give you some ideas. Uh, there's a really neat one there, Naomi Loves, does some beautiful artwork. And I try to copy it to make it, just to give you an idea. But for those of you that are unartistic, there's also a website there to help give you ideas on how to decorate, not with your own hand per se, but maybe just use some other ideas there. I think that would be great. But one thing that you can also add to your envelopes are stamps. So if you can't draw, maybe you could just use rubber stamps. And that might give you something to color or to decorate your stamp with. And I have an aunt that I know loves to color. And I sent her a letter recently, and I used the stamps to send her a letter. And what I did is here is I used the stamp, but I didn't color it. I told her to color it, so I wrote color me. And the fun thing about this is, when you send love, you get love. And I sent her this letter and she colored the, the butterfly and she sent it back to me saying how much she enjoyed it. So that was all part of the fun. 
So just remember to send lots of love to all the people that you know out there that you can't give a real hug to. You can give them some love through an envelope with a beautiful hug from you. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any other interest in looking at more of our programs, feel free to follow our website at henrico.us slash rec.